The VO Meter, measuring your voiceover progress. Whether you're a veteran voice actor, just starting out, or don't even know how to set a level, we're here to help you avoid the pitfalls along your voiceover path to success. The VO Meter is brought to you by Voice Actor Websites, Voice123, Studio Bricks, Global Voice Acting Academy, JMC Demos, and Sennheiser. The Video Meter is produced in part using Source Connect, made by source-elements.com. And now, your hosts, Paul Stefano and Sean Daly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 85 of the Video Meter. Measuring your voice over progress. We have a pretty exciting interview coming up with Andia Winslow, who is last year's Voice Actor of the Year at the One Voice Awards and this year's keynote speaker. And just overall, one of the most impressive people I've met in a long time. She's a professional athlete, on-screen actor, voice actor, personal trainer, and just really impressive person. So I'm sure you will agree once you hear the interview. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, checking out her website and listening to her work and then talking with her, just so inspiring. You guys are in for a treat. But before that, it's time for our... VoiceOver Extra brings you the VO Meter Reference Levels. Uh, seriously, guys, that's the best you could come up with? Hey, it's your show. So, Sean, what's nice. happening in your VO world? Uh, well, we talked about it a little bit, but I'm in the process of moving right now. Woo! Huzzah! Hooray! Trumpets and you're all excited. that stuff. I freaking yeah, I, hate moving. <laughs> I, it's not great, but I only have, like, one room to really pack up and stuff like that and a few major pieces of furniture. So, uh, the bulk of it should be done by the end of the month, I think. I've... I've been doing a lot of back and forth between my parents' house and my fiance's house and my uh, the house that I'm moving into, um, just trying to coordinate everything and just uh, still work while I'm doing it. Other than that, I've just been, um, you guys know I'm a big VO mobile nomad, so I have a, a mobile setup. I use like the Vomo from Vocal Booth to Go, and depending on what I have with me, either an Apogee Mic Plus or... Uh, what I'm using now, which is the uh, the Centrance Portcaster in my 416. So it, it's been fun getting back into it. I forgot how much I enjoyed that, like, being able to, or the problem solving of, <laughs> of mobile setups. But as we'll talk about in a little bit, too, they all have their challenges and considerations. But other than that, still auditioning, still doing a few like e-learning projects while I'm on the road. And I think we talked about it last episode a little bit, but it's like, on the one hand, I, I've, I've talked to my clients and even a couple of agents is like, hey, is this setup acceptable? Is it OK uh, for auditions and projects? And they've all been like, yeah, that's great. And so on the one hand, I was like, yay, that's great. They accept it. But on the other hand, I was like, why have I invested so much in audio quality? <laughs> like... Well, you've gotten to a point, though, where you're able to create a setup pretty easily because you know what you're doing. It would be different if you were just slapping stuff together and and calling it a day, but because you know what sounds good and how to process it, you're making it sound good. You're, you're, you're selling yourself short, is what I'm saying. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I was actually been doing a lot of back and forth with uh, with this great animation talent, Lila Burzens, because she's she does the con circuit, and she it's con season right now, so she's trying to figure out a good vo or, uh, mobile setup. And she was actually looking to buy a Vomo herself, but I was like, you know, it, they're such short trips, and you're flying in, in like... Um, it, it's just it's way too cumbersome for for those short trips, in my opinion. And maybe if you were traveling by car, or if you had, or like, if you weren't packing another suitcase or something, it might work it for you. But I actually encouraged her. I was like, try making a few improvised booth setups. Get used to it, and then because it it really just takes experimentation and being open to trying things, right? So I helped I helped give her advice on a few affordable items she could get like an iPad stand or a portable iPad stand and some other things but I was just like yeah you do not need to invest a lot if you're just trying to improvise a setup for auditions yeah that's true uh, and I think I've said also the Vomo I think lends itself best to the car putting it in the trunk of a car or the back of a hatchback with your suitcase and golf clubs or whatever you're bringing with you it does work really well for that i have not taken it on a plane i have no doubt i could but like you said it's sometimes more trouble than it's worth 
I have before, and it used to be, I mean, it used to be marketed as the carry-on vocal booth, and for a couple of reasons, they changed the name, but I had one occasion where they actually accepted it in carry-on. Every other time, they either asked me to check it or they made me check it after the fact. Oh, really? Yeah, it stinks. Mm-hmm. So, but it's just something, like I said, it's just those considerations, get creative with what setups you have. There are some setups that you can pack up, like, uh, like say the eyeball, it's not my favorite, but it does work with like the Apogee or an AT2020. Um, but again, it's just accepting that it's not going to be your home studio setup, but you can probably get it to an acceptable point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So what's going on in your VO world? Uh, I got a couple of things going on. I'm still doing mostly live announcing. I'm in the throes of the Athletes Unlimited lacrosse season. So it's a professional women's lacrosse league that happens to be taking place here in the Baltimore area, just north of Baltimore, Baltimore called Sparks, Maryland. And it's a full-fledged season of a lacrosse league. They play three games a week on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. No, Thursday. Saturday and Sunday, they get Friday off, and it goes on for about four weeks, and we're coming into the home stretch now. This is the last week. I've done a bunch of games, and I'm the live stadium announcer, so I announce the lineups, the um, the goals and substitutions, any penalties or red or yellow cards, and then I get to hype up the crowd a little bit, too. So it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I have to thank our friend Bob Johnson again because he referred me to this company who hired me to work with him. It's been kind of interesting because I'm currently getting over COVID. So right in the middle of the season, I get COVID for the first time in, in the pandemic. I managed to avoid it for over two years. And then I don't know if it was from the lacrosse game or possibly because in the middle of this, I took the family to Hershey Park, which is an amusement mm-hmm. park run by the Hershey Chocolate Company. Uh, it's basically like the biggest amusement park near us, like a Six Flags or... Uh, something like that. So we went there, and then three days later, we all got COVID. So that's probably what happened. Mm -hmm. But because the company is pretty flexible, and Bob is the other announcer, I was able to work out with him. He covered for me that day where I had to be quarantined, and I came back the next week and was able to, to get back in the saddle. So that's been pretty cool. And then other than that, I've been doing a lot of auditioning and booking, actually, on Voice123, which is something I want to talk about. So... I don't want to spill too many secrets, or maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I have had a lot of activity, and as we've talked about, the, the more activity you have on the platform, the better the algorithm recognizes what to send to you, and you'll eventually book. So they have a, a system of likes and favorites. A client can listen to your audition, and they can either like it, just a thumbs up, sort of like Facebook. In fact, it looks exactly like Facebook, the, the logo, and then they can favorite you as a as a voice actor they can like your individual audition and like your profile or you as an actor so i've had quite a flurry of activity with those i've it looks like uh 13 no, 14 since i was back on the platform full time 14 liked proposals and five clients who have liked or who favorited me as, as a voice actor and that has never happened before now i have to say i think it's a case of the membership level I have. So I am, full disclosure, one of the higher membership levels now. And that means that I'm getting these things first. And it means that that may be all it takes, unfortunately. <laughs> Just being first. Yeah. It may be truly a case of pay to play. Now, I was on Voice123, or I've been on Voice123 consistently with a profile since I first started. And I'm sure I'm better than I was six years ago. But I do think that it is... It is truly a large factor that I am getting these auditions first, that people are liking me, hiring me. I've booked three jobs now over the past two weeks, and I think that's made a huge difference. So take that for what it's worth. If, you, um, if you're interested in getting back on a pay-to-play platform, especially Voice123, uh, it may behoove you to jump in at one of the higher membership levels. Now, speaking of, as you may have heard on our last episode, we are once again offering a promo with Voice123. So if you are a VO Meter listener, you can go to our website, click on the Sponsors page, and there's a big Voice123 logo that says click here to save 15% on a new membership plan. So it has to be a new plan, but if you have not been a member of Voice123 before, you can save 15% on any level of membership plans with Voice123. Just click on that banner on our Sponsors page at VOMeter.com and take advantage of it. 
Well, awesome. So you guys know it's one of our favorite online casting sites. We hope you find success on the platform, and I hope you continue to find success, Paul. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so one other cautionary tale I want to talk about is negotiations for your rates, not on a voice one, two, three, or any pay-to-play -pay, pay -pay platform, but just in general, in this case, live announcing. So I approached the school where my son is starting as a freshman, a private school in the area, uh, where we're going to be paying a significant amount of tuition. And I approached them about doing their, their announcing for their sports. They currently do not have an announcer. The athletic director was pretty, pretty open to talking about it until we got to the budget. So I reached out to some of our friends and even put a post on Facebook on the public address announcers Facebook group where some of our friends are our members like Mike Norgard and Doug Trickell and Bob Johnson we talked about earlier and said, hey, this is what I'm, what I'm doing. They want me to do music and you know, DJ, live music and public address announce. Public address announce, yeah, I can talk. What would you charge? And people said probably between three hundred and six hundred dollars is fair, and that seemed fair to me as well. Three hundred on the low end, and six hundred probably on the high end. Maybe four to five being probably the average, pr probably yeah. the right the right um, average. Yeah. So I pitched them and said, "Well, here's what I'm thinking. It's two jobs that I normally only do one, and my rate for the one job is usually around a hundred dollars an hour." So how about $300 per hour cash, or, or $300 per game, I should say, sorry. $300 per game, depending on whatever the game is. It may be more or less. Lacrosse games tend to be about two hours. Soccer games, about an hour and a half. Football games, more like four. So it all comes out in the wash. I said $300 per game for music and, and public address. Or, and this is a, a recommendation I got straight from that Facebook group, which is brilliant, if you are able to bill it to my to my uh, tuition, my son's tuition, which we're paying anyway, let's do four hundred, and that way it'll it'll be easier to bill, hopefully, and it'll be more in line with industry rates. Man, and I, I just want to talk about a few points. Like, first off, just amazing marketing with like going with right relying on or not relying, but utilizing your network, right? Like Bob, the university your son's going to, keeping it regional and local. Um, also having a really customized deal based on what they can give you, right? Like in this case, some uh, credit towards tuition. So just awesome job, buddy. Thank you. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So they, oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I should have interrupted. They came back to me and said, uh, the most we can do is $100 per game. And I said, I'm sorry. I, as much as I would love to do that, it's my, it's my son's school. It's a local institution. I'd love to help, but I need to maximize my time when I'm available for, for industry rates. Because if I were to do this, it would be 20 different games over the next two months between soccer and football. And that's going to take away from time I have to work at the University of Maryland, Towns University, even other pro leagues where they will pay me a more fair rate. So I had to unfortunately say no. And the, the athletic director said no hard feelings. Hopefully that's the case. <laughs> we'll see. Or maybe and, they'll come back people, to me. Yeah, and people listening, just like it can be easy to be like, oh, $2,200? That's great. That's amazing. Uh, but like, again, the time spent doing it, the time taken away from other projects, and the fact like 2200 versus 6600 is a big gap. So like... You just really have to do what Paul did and consider, like the the cost benefit. Yeah, and hopefully they'll they'll see the error of their ways and maybe come back to me. But that remains to be seen. But it was a good good exercise in negotiation and at least getting a ballpark from some of our colleagues to say, yeah, don't don't do this for free. In fact, I'll I'll thank Doug Turkell as I always do. He reached out to me personally and said, dude, don't do it for free. Just, just don't. And I said. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I think I'm past that. I mean, mm -hmm. far be it for me to cave for money every once in a while. But in this case, I knew better than to, than to do it for $100. And again, know your worth and maximize the time you have to do things, especially in live announcing, because it takes up so much time. You really are limited in what you can do. It might take me five hours to do one football game between the actual game, the prep time, and talking to the, the teams and making sure I get all the pronunciations right and t knowing all the substitutions. It may take five hours of my day, and that's, that's a whole day I won't be able to do anything else. And that's not even counting the commute. Well, in this case, it's only about three miles away. But gotcha, that, gotcha. Was, that was that the main helps. carrot. <laughs> that, that was the main carrot, honestly, was that it is the closest 
event that I could possibly do. And it's my son's school. I'll be there every day anyway. But it wasn't meant to be, it looks like. Yeah, and it's it's like it's something to think about too because and I've been there with some of my early projects, but it's like when you're when you're green and eager, like sometimes you take things because it's just the first thing that comes up, right? And but the problem is is if you you can set a precedent for for low paying clients or or like a lot of people like, "Oh, well, maybe I can do $100 per game now and then we can renegotiate." No, most clients want to go downward not upward, right? So, again, you'd be setting a precedent and and it can kind of like psychologically it can make you think of yourself like well i'm just a budget talent i guess and i and it's really hard to upgrade beyond that yeah that's true but on a happier note i did pick up doing field hockey for the university of maryland which i think i mentioned is cool basically the biggest institution in the area so i have a, an ego boost that way and then i'm now doing field hockey for the university of maryland terrapins and that'll be a lot of fun this year Mm-hmm. Well, I still like like the people in that the announcer group. Like, I think you should take like even though it was in a successful negotiation, still count it as a win because you upheld your principles and and knew your worth. Yeah, every once in a while that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Better when it pays the bills, but I'll take the moral victory this time. <laughs> so that wraps up our VO meter reference levels. We'll have our interview with Andy at Winslow in just a moment, but first it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Questionable Gear Purchase. So uh, I'll start because it goes along with what I was just talking about. So once I got COVID and was using the, the, the in-house microphone for Athletes Unlimited, I felt bad because I was clearly there with symptoms, coughing all over their mic. So mm-hmm. I decided to buy my own mic specifically for live announcing. And it's basically all I needed was one with a switch because some events I do, they have a, what's called a power mute. So the mic is always on. And then there's this um, unit in the middle that has a, a mute switch. And then you just unmute to talk. And a lot of professional venues use that, but some don't. In this case, they did not have, um, or they did have a mute switch. But like I said, I coughed all over the mic. So I wanted to do something to, to make it as safe as possible when I came back with a mask on. And I need it anyway for other stadiums where I don't have this setup. So I bought a Sennheiser 835S, I think. Is that what it is? Yes, a Sennheiser 835S. And it's basically their handheld dynamic microphone. The S stands for switch, I think, because it has an on-off switch. Is it a a super cardioid pattern? It is a regular cardioid, not super cardioid. Oh, okay, okay. I was curious if that's what the S meant. So I think it's their answer to the SM58. It's very similar but um, it's better. I turned it on last Thursday when I came back, even still being a little hoarse with COVID. And first thing I said, I was like, oh, this is like butter. <laughs> it sounds so good on the loudspeakers. I mean, totally geeking out over my own voice, but so I couldn't it help it. So is just like more, more articulate and maybe like less noisy than the, the 58? I would say actually less articulate. Um, it's oh, it's okay. smoother, uh, mm. more output, more robust output. It sounds like it has a, a, a better frequency response because I could definitely hear my voice more full. Um, I also just might have had the, my ears unclogged after being sick for a week with COVID. Yeah. But it sounded more full and less um, and less um, detailed, which is a good thing for most live announcements. You don't want to hear a lot of lip smacking and, 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 clicks, and, yeah. and clicks when you're, when you're on a loudspeaker. And it just sounded so smooth. So the Sennheiser, sponsor of the show, but I bought this with my own money. Uh, off of Amazon, got shipped the next day after I got diagnosed with COVID. E835S, dynamic cardioid vocal microphone. And I just love it, I love it, I love it. Very cool. And actually, I remember when I was getting started, too, and, and like a lot of people know, I was in Japan in a super noisy apartment. Like some, some VO talent actually reached out to me, and they're like, yo, all you need is an SM58 and an interface. So it's just like those $100 dynamics can be a great thing to practice with, um, if you're dealing in a less than ideal space. So, um, again, if you can and if you have the space, card or like condensers are, tend to be better just because they capture the nuance and stuff like that. But if you're just practicing or if you're doing a lot of field work like Paul is, it might be worthwhile to invest in. Yeah, I actually use an SM58 for a few audiobooks, more because I think I was in between mics and couldn't decide what to do, and I just had this one. It's the one mic I've never actually resold. I just I just keep it around forever. They're useful to have. I mean, you never know when you're going to do karaoke, right? Yeah. And I actually would have... I have used it for a lot of live events, too. 
But like I said, now that I have the one with the switch, it'll just make my life easier. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and I actually know a lot of audio. We've talked about it before, but I know several audiobook narrators who use like the SM7B, for example, for audiobooks or long-form narration. Mm -hmm. and they just like the way it sounds. So that's it for me. Do you have any questionable gear purchases? Do I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, as I mean, it may sound like he, the, the man who has everything for his VO mobile setup, but we were talking a little bit about, like, m mobile booth options and stuff like that. And I had mentioned on, like, I, I had picked or posted on, on Facebook a picture of my current, like, setup at the time, which was, like, the Vomo and, um, and like, an Apogee Mic Plus. And I was, like... One of the difficulties with using something like the Vomo or the Portabooth Pro or Portabooth Plus is it's really dependent on positioning, right? Like it's difficult to find a table or a dresser or whatever that has an optimal sitting or standing height. Otherwise, you're just bending forward or on your knees. It's just not good ergonomics, especially if you're doing it for long term. So as you guys know, I'm moving and... Um, I was trying to find a setup. I'm, I'm doing a lot of back and forth between my parents, my fiancés, and in the new house in Bellingham. And so I was like, you know, I just want to replicate my current setup. And so when I had posted about that and I had posted my comments and complaints about the ergonomics, Justin Brown uh, wrote to me and he's like, you know, I'm selling my tri booth. And if you want, I can ask George if he's willing to. He hadn't used the the processing stack that comes with that. And he's like, if they're willing to transfer it, would you be interested? And I was like, would I? And, and also, like my thinking was, we were talking about before we recorded was like duplicate my current setup at home as quickly as possible, and or without having to disassemble it and move it, and then sort of upgrade my mobile setup when I eventually move to a more like ISO booth or maybe a treated room setup then that could just live in my car and become my new mobile setup. So that's that's kind of where my thinking was at. Maybe maybe it was a questionable gear purchase, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing I hadn't mentioned is, like, I think I talked about it before, but, like, I, uh, I had some medical expenses. I, I had some really bad neck and jaw problems. So after spending a few grand on that, i uh, feeling much better, by the way. I mean, as you guys can tell, my voice sounds more full. I have way more energy and vocal stamina than I have. Like, I'm singing again. I'm doing voices again. It's great. Um, and it was a worthwhile expense. There's no question about that. But then I was just like, all right, let's recoup some savings before that. And, and, and honestly, one of the great things about where I'm moving to, Bellingham, is that it's like it's a very creative community, lots of musicians and artists and stuff like that. Think like Seattle or Portland kind of uh, mentality. And there are like three recording studios within 10 minutes of my house. And like I've been to two of them and I've, I've networked with the people there and they all like me. So it's just like it's just an opportunity to if I need quiet on demand, I can just call these guys up and be there within in the hour, you know? Yeah, and like you said, eventually you might need to move to a, a more permanent solution, but if that's all you need, we've often said just work with what you have, and you may not need an ISO booth. Yeah, it's like we've said, it's when people are like, how do I know when it's the right time to invest? Or when your current setup is preventing you from a gig, basically. Like, when do you get Source Connect? When a client asks for it. When do you get a booth? When you're in a situation where you need quiet on demand, right? And, and so, again, you just have to kind of look at your career from an aerial view and just be like, what problems do I have and how can I address those, right? Like, don't create problems that you don't have to justify ex gear purchases, although we've totally, obviously, we're guilty of that. But it's all for your benefit. So, <laughs> yes, of course. It's all, it's all for the listeners. Between this and GVAA, it's so easy to be like, well, maybe a member wants to know how to use this. So, like, <laughs> Really think about your situation, what you can get by with, and don't make those giant upgrades unless it's truly justified. All right. Well, we've been rambling on enough about our current events and questionable gear purchases, and we really want you to hear what Andy is all about. So without further ado, let's take it to the interview room. How many times has this happened to you? You're listening to the radio when this commercial comes on, not unlike this one, and this guy starts talking, not unlike myself. Or maybe it's a woman that starts talking, not unlike myself, and you think to yourself, geez, I could do that. Well, mister, well, missy, you just got one step closer to realizing your dream as a voiceover artist, because now there's Global Voice Acting Academy. 
All the tools and straight from the hip, honest information you need to get on a fast track to doing this commercial yourself. Well, not this one exactly. Classes, private coaching, webinars, home studio setup, marketing and branding help, members only benefits like workouts, rate and negotiation advice, practice scripts, and more. All without the kind of hype you're listening to right now. Go ahead, take our jobs from us. We dare you. Speak for yourself, buddy. I like what I do. And you will too when you're learning your craft at Global Voice Acting Academy. Find us at globalvoiceacademy.com. Because you like to have fun. Hey, Paul, did you know Voice123, the largest online marketplace for voice actors, just celebrated its 20th year anniversary? Whoa, really? That's amazing. Doesn't really surprise me, though. I've used Voice123 since the beginning of my career. I remember way back in my first year where I booked a job as a hypnotist. I actually got to say, you are getting very sleepy on a radio ad. The whole thing was super easy. They even paid me right away for the audition and said that was all they needed. I've been a member of Voice123 for years as well. I've always enjoyed their upfront policies, ability to contact clients directly, and their commitment to the voiceover industry. Totally. CEO Rolf Veldman has appeared on the show before, and in every interaction I've had with him and the company, I felt a sense of trust, like they really care. Well, if you want a great place to find your VO niche and find yourself as a voice actor, visit voice123.com for more information. Now, VO Meter listeners can also get 15% off premium tier memberships. For more information, visit our website and click on the Click Here to Save 15% banner on our sponsors page. Voice123, speak for yourself. Studio Bricks designs and creates the highest performing portable sound isolation booths. Their professionally perfected acoustics enhances your performance and takes your recording to their maximum quality from your home studio. Forget about managing noise conflicts with your neighbors and family. Pursue your passion for voiceover on your own time and on your own terms. Walgreens, because it's flu season, and you live in a place with doorknobs and handrails and, you know, people. We tried booking a vacation rental on one of those other websites. They don't always tell you everything. The stars take it to the red carpet. We are back live from the red carpet. California leads the way for change in America, and so does Kamala Harris. Rated M for Mature. Claire Redfield. And who exactly are you? So, yeah, what hashtag should I use to describe a grown man in a tuxedo wrestling a goat? And prior to 1933, many of them belonged to a variety of political parties that were now outlawed in Germany. This is the story of how Q got curly. Quinn was crazy about curls. Curly fries, curly straws, curly-haired dogs. Hey, Jay Michael here. Thanks for listening to the VO Meter Podcast. It's one of my favorites. If you're looking for a great demo like the ones you just heard, check out jmcdemos.com for more information. Hi, everyone. Our guest today is Andia Winslow. She's a Yale alumna and founder of The Fit Cycle. She's also an on-air TV personality, master certified fitness professional, retired professional golfer, National Parks Foundation ambassador, and contributor for the American Heart Association Go Red for Women campaign. Her innovative fitness and wellness efforts have been recognized globally, with features by CNN, The New York Times, USA Today, SXSW, ESPN, Cosmopolitan, Oxygen, Women's Health Magazine, and Forbes, recognizing her work as the smartest, sexiest workout videos ever. In 2006, Anya became the fourth African American to ever compete in LPGA Tour history, joining the distinguished ranks of tennis great Althea Gibson. An elite athlete, Anya trained with Olympic Hall of Fame track and field coach Brooks Johnson and was invited to join the USA Bobsled and Skeleton Federation. Heralded as one of the top trainers in New York City, she is committed to her work that encourages youth and adults to maintain healthy and active lifestyles. Raised in Seattle, Washington, Andia loves heavy beats and good riffs and works to inspire folks to harmonize their bodies with their environments. The tendency to talk to and answer herself aloud in character led to a most useful birthday gift, voice lessons. Growing up, she didn't give much thought to the fact that her uncle, Michael Winslow, was known as the man of 10,000 sound effects, but now, as an Emmy Award-winning voice actor, she totally gets it. Look for her on the silver screen in the TV series reboot of the classic baseball movie, A League of Their Own, in 2022, and as golf pioneer Anne Gregory in the film Playing Through. So, please join us in welcoming Andia Winslow. How you doing, Andia? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, our pleasure. 
Thanks for being here. I, I know that bio is a little heavy, but honestly, you're one of the most impressive people I've met in decades, and I really wanted to get all that out there because it, it's just so impressive to hear, and you're such an impressive person. So kudos to all of that. Thank you. And along those lines, you just finished up the weekend at One Voice USA, which unfortunately I was not able to attend this year. We met there last year. But you were this year's keynote speaker, as well as last year's Voice Actor of the Year at the One Voice Awards. So can you tell us how that experience was over the past weekend? Oh, it was wonderful to reconnect with the peers in the industry in person. You know, I've been very quarantined, <laughs> actually quarantined to the max. So being in, in person and vibing with folks real time is always a pleasure. Uh, and you know this community, it's everyone's so loving and, and uh, they, everyone shares. It's share and care alike. So it was, it was really great. Um, I think my only hope is that I was able to inspire audiences who came to my talks and that I was able to pass on some knowledge that's been passed on to me by other voiceover stalwarts. Well, I saw some pictures and, and people cheering during the keynote, so I, I know it was well-received once again. So tell us, Anya, how did you get started in all of this? Kind of a strange story. I was living in New York City, and I was a master coach for folks getting ready for the New York City Marathon. And one of my classes, someone came to me after class, and I thought she was going to you know, ask me about my, my wonderful playlist, which was fire. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, she, she asked me if I had considered voiceover, and and it wasn't really because of my dulcet tone. It was more because of my ability to craft a narrative and tell a story. And uh, my best friend got me vocal lessons as a gift. And I went to one of those classes and I said, oh, man, what is this? I got to learn. And then I was all in. So we have to talk about the the piece in your bio about your uncle. You hadn't thought about this at all as a little kid or watching <laughs> your uncle uh, on Police Academy and the like. Never, never came up before that? Not ever. I mean, I... I think back, I'm like, the first time that I actually understood what he did, he came to my first grade class, and he was my show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids loved him. He was he was amazing. He's amazing what he does. But I was like, oh, that's just Uncle Michael, right, whatever. Right. You know, because I was <laughs> into sciences, and I was into, you know, space and that kind of thing. I wasn't interested in, in the creative arts or performance. And I really, until, I guess, Five years ago, I'd never really taken any, I hadn't taken acting seriously. I'd not thought about performance in that way. It was all just fact-based work that I had done. Also, and we all know family can't be cool. It's just a fact. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> so now you've been so doing it for a little while. What are the primary genres that you work in? Uh, luckily, I get to work across genres. Uh, I'm really known for anthems and manifestos, anything sports-related. Um, those are my specialties, but I I work a lot commercial promos video games but i'm also an in-show narrator uh, i do a lot of long-form narration for like the times and new yorker and rolling stone i've read some audiobooks live announces a lot of fun animation as well so i really work across genre and i think as a result of that it's kind of like when you're training for a sport or to train your body for your physique something called periodization so my long form work informs my short form work it doesn't seem that way it's counterintuitive but it really does help me be a more well-rounded uh, artist that's amazing. And honestly, you need that versatility to have any kind of longevity in this career. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. What, what, what was your biggest challenge getting started? Uh, figuring out how to start, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't think I knew what route to take because I was so new. I was so green in this industry. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know to whom I should call for, for assistance. I didn't know where I should be or what I should be doing. Because again, I've not was not in the entertainment industry in this in this way. And fortunately, I guess unfortunately in a way too, I my first major booking was a SAG booking. So Whoa. I was a voice of PBS and then as a result I was a must join, paid the fee from that from that uh, from that payment to SAG after and then I was in the union, which then meant I couldn't do any more non union work. But I was still so green that I had no idea what the next steps were. Uh, so looking back, I realized that might have been a strange <laughs> entry into the business. But as a result, since I didn't have any work, nor did I have an agent, all I did was spend a year learning. So I read every voiceover book. I read every blog. I listened to every podcast, including yours, gentlemen. Really? Actually, awesome. Yeah. We're sorry. <laughs> no, no. It was, I was listening to every episode of every podcast that came up on Google. Uh, I... You know, took every class that was offered in my area. I I just read everything, and I think as a result, I was had this more, I guess, global idea and understanding of what it was. And then I was able to then get agented, and from there, it's been it's been a, a quite 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 the ride. 
Incredible. I don't know if agented is a word, but it is now. <laughs> to coin the term agented. <laughs> I like it. So what are your biggest challenges now as you navigate uh, what's become a very successful career rapidly? Time management, project management, because sometimes, you know, it's, especially in the promo world, it's, they call you and they say, this is going on air in 30 minutes, please record. So if I've gone out to go get a well-made burrito, I got to run back home real quick. So it's, uh, there, there was a, a phrase someone used with me, I think a couple years ago saying, promos are golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. Golden hand, what is it? Golden handcuffs. But now I understand you really, your time is not quite your own. You're, you're not an ER doc, but you are on call and you're all on call sometimes any time of the day. So it's being able, being agile enough to, uh, you know, switch switch tasks and get the client what they need uh, post haste. That's really what promo work is about. I'm curious if your experience as an athlete has helped you with that sort of uh, being always ready to to come in off the bench or being ready on a moment's notice for uh, being put into a game. Has that helped you in that transition? Oh, uh, it's interesting. Interesting point. I think more than anything, because I didn't play team sports in that way, but for me, it's more about discipline. Do I have the discipline to every morning get up and do my vocal warm-up and do my physical warm-up that informs my mental acuity and my uh, agility, I guess, uh, stamina? So it's it's about discipline and um, also not taking things personally. It's the job. You do your audition, you do the gig, and you move on. There's no looking back. There's no past looking. It's always uh, looking in the present and moving forward to other things. So I think definitely athleticism has helped me uh, mentally, especially, which is, I think, a part that a lot of folks don't focus on. That's amazing. So I noticed on your website that you actually have a spoken word demo, which is kind of unique for some talent. But what other genres have you not tried that you'd like to do? You know, curiosity is my operating principle and adventure. Um, so I wanted to see everything. And thankfully, when I first started, I had a, I took a workshop at the sag After Foundation here in Los Angeles. They've got a VO lab that's robust in the offerings and also what they, what they, they do technically. And the board is all industry legends. It's named in honor of Don LaFontaine and all his friends pitched in money to help create this space for new people to learn. And it's just been an incredible resource for me. And one of his friends was Sylvia Villagran, and she came to speak, and she said, try everything. Try everything to see what you don't like, to see that what you do. And as a result of my natural inclination and her advice, I said, I'm going to try it all. And now I do it all, and that's where the time management issue comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that for a second. Do you see that changing in the future? Because in, we've talked to talent for years now, and we've always sort of pitched the mantra of following the money and letting the genres find you. And I get the mm. curiosity, obviously, but at some point, do you think it'll change where you will focus on one particular genre that's basically your bread and butter? Or do you think you'll always just be curious and try everything as much as you can? That is poignant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, money, uh, uh, the money for mortgage and student loan repayment, that's very important, and, and food. So commercials pay the best. We know this. Commercials pay the best. Um, but if you are someone who does a really great job in your genre, you can command what your payment would be. So I, I imagine someone like Scott Brick or Julia Whalen, they can charge way more for their finished per hour for an audiobook than a, just a regular person. So I think it is being best in class in what you do and then demanding your rate. It may not just be SAG scale, it might be SAG triple scale. Um, and the same thing with voiceover and commercials and the shorter forms. A regular sag after actor or non-union, they might get the established rate. Here's the rate the creative directors say. But if you're a celebrity, you might get paid triple scale, quintuple scale, or you name your own rate. So I think it's a matter of be the best in craft and then maybe have, I guess, things that make you stand out so that you can demand your rate. And that goes with auditioning, too. Some people get paid to audition. So, mm. you know, I think for me, yes, commercials pay the most, and it's the quickest quickest turnaround. Uh, but right now, I'm going to go with what pays me, and if if clients seek me out or the repeat clients, I'm going to honor that because we've worked together so well. Their hiring practices have led to me being able to pay my bills, so I'm not going <laughs> to turn down any work as it, <laughs> as it stands right now. Hey, gratitude's important too. Heck yes. So we were talking a little bit about where you see your own future in VO, and we got another poignant question for you, but where do you see the future of VO? And don't worry, like, we don't hold you to any prophecies that you have. So. <laughs> you don't? You don't? <laughs> Our viewers might, but we'll, we'll tell them to be nice. Okay, Sean, let's see here. I think uh, continued inclusivity 
uh, of voices and experiences and not just, you know, racial inclusivity, but, you know, gender inclusivity. You've got a lot more opportunities for folks who don't who don't uh, live in like a black versus white type world. Um, you got folks who are new to VO, who have really you know, unique voices, folks who have accents, folks who maybe have some speech impediments that are traditionally shunned. But what the market demands right now is authenticity. And people spend money, no matter who they are, where they're from. So I think the industry is finally realizing like, hey, let's get folks who've lived a life. And if think if talent want to work in this business, just continue living a life and, and having robust experiences. You want to be a th- three-dimensional craftsperson. Don't just try to fit into a mold you think should be because obviously that's been broken. Now, I will say that, you know, this industry is cyclical. I mean, the radio voice, the, the transatlantic voice is no longer the thing. But who's to say when that might come back? I have no idea. What do you all think? I think it's amazing advice. And, and a lot of people, like even myself, have come into this injury, industry thinking that it's like all about hiding behind various characters and personas when really now they just want you to be you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will mm-hmm. say that there is a bit of a resurgence in the radio voice. I mean, maybe I see it more because I kind of have that voice. But I've, I've booked a lot of stuff recently that's classic, over-the-top announcer in your face. Mm. Even, even sports announcer, too. I've had a bunch of stuff recently for sports announcing uh, where they want Marv Albert or they want Kevin Harlan. Oh. And they I want mean, that, they want that back that again. genre, you know? It's a it's, it's specific type. Right. Even in jest, too, I've seen that, uh, Paul. I've seen folks Lots say... Lots of parodies, yeah. Yeah, we, we want the traditional... V- I actually did a spot for Hulu recently, and they're like, you're going to be paired with a traditional voiceover guy, and you're going to call him out, okay, VO guy. And mm-hmm. So it's funny to work with him because it's just, he's doing traditional, I'm doing, you know, post-post-modern, but the spot ended up being really fun because we were working off each other. So a throwback to, you know, a uh, call to the the past, the legacy of the of the business, and then the authenticity of the real, real everyday person. So it kind of worked very well. Yeah, it, it lets everybody shine with what they're doing either either in their career or at the moment. So, for instance, I'm right now doing a women's lacrosse uh, league. I'm the, the stadium announcer. So if I come in from that and I'm still all jumped up and, and amped up from being at the stadium and I get an audition like that, then it's really easy for me to slip into it and do that mm-hmm. and still have some fun because it's bringing, like you said, bringing me to the role as opposed to putting on something that I'm not really naturally do, natural doing yeah. at the time. It's, I guess, what they call in, I guess, in on camera is like truth casting yeah like mm-hmm. why hire someone who's putting on you can just go high if you want a skateboarder just go to the venice and get a skateboarder you don't need someone to try to pretend that they're you know get the real thing get the real mccoy and as a result it's going to feel more real to the viewers and people are going to buy your product or be moved in a certain way and you don't so, have to pay brad pitt a hundred thousand dollars to learn how to skate so. hundred thousand dollars you better go a million Probably a lot more than that yeah <laughs> Yeah, not when uh, I was hoping he got modest in his in his old age. But. Yeah, and then you have Sean White, who's a natural personality, and you can just hire him to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes much more sense. Exactly. So, as you know, or maybe you know from listening to the podcast, we do have a lot of listeners who are new to the business. So, what would you recommend to someone who's just getting started in voice acting to sort of get the ball rolling in their career? Read every day. Everything out loud, menus, billboards, the dog food label, uh, the newspaper, even if you don't want to do long form, because that's going to help inform how you present yourself, you know, on the mic. Uh, I think a lot of folks are very eager to get started and eager to source agents and demos and paid work. You're not ready yet. Don't if you don't do the work required of a professional VO, you, you just you're just not ready. So there are no shortcuts. You want to develop the craft. You want to do the work. That means, again, listening to industry standard go to ispot.tv and look at and see what's playing nationally look look and understand what the regionalisms are where does your voice fit in are you the guy next door are you the girl in the know are you the mom with concern are you you know the grandfather who's had who's wizened i mean you've got to find out where your voice fits in the current market um and then just i would say consume everything like i did when i first started i yes i had questions and yes i could ask people uh, for advice but You've got to have a leg to stand on. You don't want just people giving you advice and then take it, you know, face value. You've got to do some research and you've got to make an investment in yourself. Don't expect handouts. And I think as a result of that, you'll have a more enduring career. I hope that's not too um, scared straight. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like just like screaming thank you in my brain. So I'm just like I want to give you a digital hug. It's just like <laughs> and, and to be honest, like just listening to your story and the, the way that you've approached this, like the research, the the learning through absorption and practice and in your consistency and discipline, like it, it's just it, it's a very inspiring example. And I hope people are taking notes. <laughs> 
So, Adi, I have one more question. It's, it's off script, and hopefully it'll be okay. But I feel like you're the perfect per- person to ask this. I saw this meme several times, actually, recently over the last couple of days on Facebook about um, stop thinking that all these validations of your talent are a fluke and that you're mm-hmm. there by accident, that you actually deserve to be there and you're good at this thing. So when did you realize that you were good at this thing and wanted to pursue it full time? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> You know, it's interesting that you asked that. I'm not sure if this is a sidebar, if this is in line with what you asked, but I was cleaning out one of my computers the other day and listening back to auditions and seeing what I should throw away, and I was so bad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh my gosh, this, I got paid for this? This is just not great. Uh, Yeah, been there. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, I don't have the strength to do it now. I don't want (laughs) to. It was definitely humbling, but I think when I knew I could do it was when I stopped trying to be someone that I was not. And I could feel it happen like, oh, I'm no longer putting on. Um, And then one very, very clear in the world example was, uh, let's see, I've been doing this full time for four years, but two and a half years ago, I was at home with my folks for the holidays and one of my commercials came on, a Dairy Queen commercial. And the voice I used for those commercials at the time was more saccharine voice. It was higher pitched. It was aged down by 10 to 15 years. And it's also the voice I use when I talk to our pets. Mm. And, and it's so, so we're watching this commercial. The dog's in my lap. The commercial comes on. The dog looks back at me, looks at the TV, <laughs> looks at me, looks at the TV. And then he kind of gets off my lap and like regards me and looks at the TV. And I was like, I've arrived. I've arrived. <laughs> Rondy, I have a right. <laughs> He's like, wait a second. How could you be both places at once? I see you sitting right here, but then you're in the TV. What's that about? And I was like, yep. I'm a voiceover artist, artist and craftsperson. I've arrived. <laughs> that sums it up perfectly, doesn't it? Love it. Great story. So last question, basically just an opportunity for shameless self-promotion, but how can folks hire you? They can hire me through my agents or managers, uh, DPN or JMT, but really if they want to send me a note uh, off my website, which is ondiavoiceover.com, or on social, I'm at Andy Winslow across the board. Andia, it's been a pleasure having you. Like I said, you are by far one of the most impressive people I've met in, in years, and we're so happy to have you on the podcast. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Sean. Really yeah. good time. It was our pleasure. Always nice to see another Seattleite. Oh, you're from Seattle? Yep, Federal Way right now. Wow, (laughs) son of the 206. I love it. Awesome. (laughs) Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right. Thanks so much to Andia for joining us on the podcast, especially after her long weekend. We're recording this literally on the day after One Voice USA, and I know she was there and, and just got back home. So I really appreciate her taking the time to jump back into a recording with us and talk about her experiences as a voice actor. Yeah, you never would have told, though, because, I mean, she was just ready and willing and just with it. it and she was just a joy to talk to. Yeah. And if you hadn't, if you weren't listening in the bio, uh, the, that series, A League of Their Own, is about to release. So definitely check that out. I'm pretty excited about that. That was always one of my favorite movies as a kid. Oh, yeah, with Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, and then Tom Hanks, of course. So having that reboot as a series is going to be really cool. And we get to see our friend Nadia in it. Indeed. Super excited for her and super excited to see the show. So that wraps up this episode of the VO Meter. Measuring your voiceover progress. Coming up, we'll have an interview featured with Greg Jake Gibbons, who is a voice actor and radio imaging guy out of Dallas. And look forward to that. All right. So have a great day, everyone. You'll hear us in the next one. Thanks for listening to this episode of the VO Meter. To follow along, visit us at www.vometer.com. 
We'd also love to hear your comments or suggestions for the show. Or if you have a questionable gear purchase, tell us all about it on our Facebook page or on Twitter at the VO Meter. 